Welcome to the Land Cruiser project. So the bottom line up front on this 1997 uh, LX450 is that it's yeah, pretty clean. Maybe a little question about accident damage here on the front end. We've got some signs um, that yeah we'll, we'll go over in the video, but overall pretty clean. The mileage is excellent. So yeah, look for this one to close. Yeah, likely in the mid to upper 20s. That's my guess. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. Welcome to the Line Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review online listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Line Cruisers. And we do this in order to share and convey information that might be helpful if you're in the market for a Land Cruiser. So the vehicle we're gonna study today is this 1997 LX, Lexus LX 450. Currently bid up to $12,500. It's got four days left and yeah, looks like it's out of California. So, um, yeah, let's go through the details here on the right in the essential section being sold by Car Love 5. Uh, let's see, this is, they're just a new member just now. Uh, so yeah, no history there. It's located in Stockton, California. It's got really low mileage for the year, so 115,000 miles. Unfortunately, only has the locking center differential. The paint is champagne pearl, ivory leather upholstery on the inside. And yeah, just overall seems like it's yeah pretty, pretty well stock and factory. Moving over here to the description on the left, uh, let's see, it's been registered in California through the seller's acquisition in 2019 and now shows 115,000 miles. Wow, so they, they probably yeah, bought it at a pretty good price. Let's see, it's obviously powered by the 4.5 liter uh, 1FZ FE. It's got a locking center differential, dual range transfer case, and so on. Everything seems pretty normal and standard. Three rows of seating, roof rack, uh, running boards, etc. Service under current ownership included replacing the front main still power front main seal, power steering pump, spark plugs, intake gasket, and valve cover gasket. This 80 series is now offered in a reserve. Great. <laughs> with uh, with the owner's manual service records and a clean Carfax report and clean California title and the seller's name. So all these items regarding, you know, recent service, those are all very stereotypical for like baselining and just things that need to be done, even at this mileage, but more because of the age, the rubber in all of these components. Well, yeah, they, they fell, they harden, and they end up leaking and you end up just with massive oil leaks on the front of the engine. Uh, so the truck being finished in champagne pearl, it's got beige lower cladding. Uh, this is something specific to the LX450. You can see that wraps all the way around the vehicle. That extends into the LX470 design as well. Uh, not on the LX570 though, the um, 200 series. Uh, the seller notes the scuttle panel and rear bumper were repainted, right? So this is, I'd assume they're referring to this bottom uh, plastic piece. This is the scuttle panel, maybe even, I don't know, this middle part, not sure what exactly. Uh, but yeah, I did see just in a moment ago, did see a color difference between these. So it looks like that's been repainted. Uh, maybe the scuttle panel is just the, yeah, this middle piece, not, not quite sure. Uh, the power antenna is non-functional, very common thing, and there's blemishes such as scratches on the fender, rust on the running boards, and paint deterioration on mirror arms as shown in the gallery. So the mirror arms are the little, um, they're kind of like metal. I think they're like a cast aluminum or something, but anyway, they're on the, uh, yeah, on the, the mirrors there, the side, the side mirrors. Very common for those to have those issues. It's just got regular Yokohama highway tires in the 275-70R16 size. That is the factory and original size. And we've got a full-size spare tire mounted on an under-chassis carrier. Let's see, the steering knuckles were rebuilt in 2019, and the power steering pump and high-pressure hose were replaced in 2020. Yep, very common things. Good to see those services being done. Uh, and even the knuckles, though, being done in 2019, you know, that can, those can require routine maintenance, you know, such as greasing, tightening the, the nuts and such. Let's see, interior looks pretty clean just from that little sneak peek. Uh, flaws such as worn front seats, scratches on the on the right side dashboard, and discolored front footwell carpet can be seen in the gallery. Yeah, steering wheel looks pretty good. Same with the shifter handle. We'll, I'm sure we'll get detailed shots. And since 2019, he's put the sellers put 10,000 miles on the vehicle. All right, looking here at the engine bay, yeah, we've got a roasted uh, radiator that's definitely due for replacement. The quality of the photo here, at least from the listing, I can't see the min sticker, so we'll have to pay special attention there when we get there. Uh, the oil pump cover seal and the front main seal were replaced in August 2019. Again, very typical, you know, baseline maintenance. And yeah, there's the rest that looks like they did the fuel filter, distributor cap, spark plugs, intake gasket, valve cover gasket. So hopefully they also got all of the other hoses that are here, but maybe not. 
let's see, pretty clean frame looking up front and yeah, no accidents, looks like a clean Carfax. So let's go ahead and take a peek at that. All right, so last owned in California, owned in California its entire life, it looks like from 1997 through 2019. Let's see, we're gonna just take a peek for any like mileage discrepancies basically with it having such low mileage. Yeah, we'd wanna be, you know, pay special attention to that. Looks like it was in Southern California, Santa Monica, LA area through at least 70,000 miles. Let's see, when did it come up north? Still in Southern California through like 90,000 miles. And yeah, the mileage is just ticking up very normally. And then finally, I think at 105 is when it came up. So when the seller picked it up. So they picked it up roughly at about 105,000 miles. It's got 115 now. And yeah, nothing really out of the ordinary being registered here. So there is nothing really in Google, nor is there anything in vehiclehistory.com. There are a handful of videos, so be sure to check those out. Uh, but we're going, we are going to focus on the photos. So let's jump into it. Uh, Based on that front engine bay photo in the listing, I'm a little curious about perhaps, um, yeah, front fender damage uh, or maybe, yeah, some sort of accident. So we'll kind of keep our eyes on that. The scuffs here on the front left corner, that looks pretty normal. Uh, looking down the side of the vehicle, the cladding here on the fender seems like it's sagging a little bit. So I'm going to hold off on you know, what the status of the fender is and if it's been replaced or if it's been repainted. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and yeah, move around. We've got some more scuffs on the front bumper. Looking at the gaps in the alignment here, more or less, it looks okay. If you look, there's a little bit of like misalignment on the hood. You can see this body line here from the fender above this side marker light looks nice and flat and crisp. As we get over here to the passenger side, the hood is adjusted downward, it appears. Maybe a little bit more gap, kind of hard to tell, but yeah, so we're definitely not going to be able to rule out shenanigans up front here. A little bit of a color difference. I see a little bit more blue shade on the lower valence compared to the fender. Uh, so I'm guessing as of right now, yeah, some sort of um, yeah, skirmish here on the front driver's side. But again, we'll let the photos bear that out. We're just seeing some you know minor indications of that. Moving around here to the passenger side front corner. Yeah, more or less looks good. And kind of, you know, compare this front cladding on the passenger side fender compared to what we saw on the driver's side. And you can see like what I'm getting at. This is definitely not as, um, you know, tilted as it was. We've got some more scuffs here on the rear wheel well kind of arched fender flare. You can also see just barely in the detail there, you can see like the paint protection film that they applied. Let's go ahead and go back over to the driver's side and you can kind of see the faint outline of that too. Sorry, I keep moving to the next photo, but you can see a faint outline. So that's that's a good indicator that the, yeah, hasn't really been touched up. I It's kind of weird, like this paint almost, I don't know if it's the lighting, but I believe I believe this should be a different color, the bottom cladding, and you can see it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's not, <laughs> but yeah, you can definitely see it's kind of more gold down here. And as you get into the wheel well arch, or, you know, the fender flare, you don't really see that that gold color there. There, it's a little bit more obvious. So much, yeah. Looking at this photo, yeah, it's definitely the lighting. There's that scratch they were talking about on the front fender. You can see it nice, you know, nice and long, about six inches or so. Uh, typical kind of pitting that happens on these uh, side mirror arms that they talked about in the listing. And then it looks like they've got some sort of yeah aftermarket antenna that's non non functional. Yeah, peering in here, this is a little curious why the fender flare and you can kind of see that the I don't know this wheel well arch or the apron is kind of exposed and I'm just kind of curious, not sure what to make of that yet. Uh, but yeah, let's go through the rest of the photos. Yeah, the running boards, they said rest, but yeah, if, if there is anything, it looks pretty minor. This is on the driver's side. You can see that paint protection film. Yeah, everything seems to be in order and, and a definite color difference between the, the cladding and the, the body. So yeah, just a little bit of a, <laughs> a lighting trick there. And then, yeah, if they're calling this rust on the running boards, yeah, I'd say that's it's doing pretty good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a paint difference. Again, it's hard to tell sometimes the lighting for the upper tailgate versus the rear quarter. Um, yeah, moving back here to the front, kind of photos are jumping all over the place. All the other gaps here, besides this little corner on the hood, all the other gaps, you know, they seem they seem like they're in pretty good shape. All right, let's go ahead and swing around. Those rear corners all look just fine. 
tail lights look good. You've got the yeah the rear and third brake light is functioning as well, and yeah there's that it's kind of weird how this happens, but the uh, yeah the paint just kind of falls apart and then yeah you end up with this like pitting corrosion kind of interesting. Uh, regarding signs of like repaint, yeah this looks pretty good. There is a little bit of kind of like gray on here, so that's a little concerning. And it it's not uniform, so. Yeah, and we only saw two of those, two of those handles. So, yeah, one of the signs regarding, you know, paint jobs is that, yeah, sometimes if these door handles aren't removed, um, these gaskets, these rubber gaskets will get, yeah, painted. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that. It could just be sun exposure, so we'll, we'll hold off there. All right, moving here to the back, one interesting thing about the 1997, both Land Cruiser and Lexus, they came with the Lexus emblem centered on the rear upper hatch. So probably is either original or they at least got it back in the same spot. Uh, but seeing the faded Lexus LX450 badge here is a pretty dead giveaway that that's all original there. A little bit of fading on the top of the plastic side mirror. That's very normal. And yeah, looking here at these windows, yeah, that all looks good. Nothing, even the little uh, molding here, that all looks good as well. There's your etchings on your windows. Yeah, those, those look fine as well. All right, moving to the wheels, yeah, we do see a little bit of what I would say like corrosion characteristic of kind of like salty, rusty places. Uh, again, the usage per the listing appears to be like Santa Monica. So it is possible that there was a little bit of sea breeze affecting this vehicle that can cause corrosion. I had a, a Land Cruiser A97 that was in Destin, Florida or Panama Beach City, Florida, and it caught lots of sea breeze. And there was actually some pretty substantial corrosion on kind of like the front core support in the in the hood. So it is a it is a thing. And you can see just little evidence of that that would on an, what would be an otherwise, you know, pristine vehicle. All right, moving to the interior, the seat bottom on this driver's seat, that's definitely been reupholstered. It does look like it's a pretty good match. Uh, the top, right, the seat back, that's all original. Little tear here in the weather ship. Pretty much all of them have that. And, yeah, at least the, with this photo and the settings, this color yeah, appears very silver instead of uh, kind of like gold. It's kind of nice. A steering wheel does show some wear, some discoloration there, which is yeah, normal for the age and the mileage. Carpets seem clean. Floor mats look good. Got a VIN sticker here on the driver door. No signs of paintless dent repair. I've got the original VIN label. Uh, no triple locker as we expected, and the carpets continue to look pretty good. Those are, I believe, those are aftermarket floor mats, just based on, yeah, this huge, huge panel. The the Toyota one originally would have just all been, or the Lexus one would have all been carpet, I believe. All right, moving here to the passenger seat. Uh, just some discoloration on the seat. This one has not had the seat bottom replaced. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I feel pretty confident saying that after looking at both of those photos. Uh, yeah, interesting discoloration on the seat, kind of all over. Kind of looks like mold, like little mold spores, little mold residue. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, the carpet on the passenger side looks good. Yeah, you can see those scratches. Kind of interesting. I'm not sure, like maybe putting a bag in and out of the front seat maybe would cause that. Yeah, otherwise, that handle looks good. Nice close-up shot of the front drawer or passenger side door that with the Erico sticker that looks fine yeah overall yeah the dash and just the overall cleanliness and the detail of the vehicle yeah this actually looks really good and the steering wheel you know while it does have the discoloration feels like the leather still got quite a bit of life left again as you would expect for the mileage so yeah 114,791 miles photos taken with the engine warm uh oil pressures like a little low but these gauges are notoriously inaccurate um, and idle is sitting at about where it should. Uh, let's see one thing on the 97 line cruisers and the LX 450s 96 and 97 is that they came with an automatic temperature control. So you see the temperature setting and yeah, you can put it in automatic mode. It's kind of a nice, nice touch. A little discoloration here on the, what the ashtray, uh, cover, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that looks fine. Center console, just a little like hair in there. Otherwise that looks good. Uh, there's a center mounted um, kind of like subwoofer here in the front for the sound system. Moving to the rear, those seats look mint and good. The nets on the back of the front seats are sagging, of course. But yeah, those are doors. That all looks fine. Seat belts look mint. Little little defect there on the um, outboard side of the second row seat on the driver's side. 
but yeah, door cards look good. All right, looking at the carpet here under the driver floor mat, yeah, I think that's the discoloration they're talking about. Kind of interesting that that's the way it is, but yeah, that all the carpet looks to be original. Um, you might be able to get some of that out with like a shampoo machine. And then, yeah, just more discoloration, perhaps coffee or something like that on the passenger side. Uh, some marks and discoloration on the visor. It looks like they're actually staying up, though, which is nice. Uh, not sure if somebody tried to repair this, but this plastic around the sunroof gets extremely brittle. And, yeah, it looks like that's cracked there in the back, but nowhere else. All right, moving to the rear cargo area. Yeah, this all looks good. Carpet looks great. Third row seats were present. Really no corrosion to note here on the handle. Uh, moving here to the front of the engine, in the, or the front of the vehicle in the engine bay. Yeah, like I said before, that radiator is toast. Time to get that thing replaced. Uh, regarding VIN stickers here on the engine bay, I don't see anything on the... Now we've got a higher quality photo. I don't see anything on the passenger side. I don't see any VIN stickers on the driver's side either. So there is a good chance this thing... Uh, in its entirety in the front, yeah, had either a repaint or something going on. So let's go ahead and look at some of these fasteners. The detail of the photo is not really giving us what we want to see. Maybe I can see evidence that this front one's been turned. Um, yeah, it's really hard to tell. I, I think the the concept of sea breeze and corrosion on this one, I think that's going to hold true. These fasteners, I mean, this looks very similar to what my, um, my Florida Gulf Coast uh, Land Cruiser looked like. And yeah, not enough detail on these photos. Hopefully we, we get that to tell whether or not they'd been turned. But otherwise the engine looks pretty good. The valve cover gasket doesn't seem to be leaking, you know, some of those normal leakers that we see on top. Uh, one thing that I really like to yeah, bring out and talk about in, especially dealing with the 1FC, is that the main engine wiring harness comes from like the, under the, or behind the dash and the, uh, the glove box. It comes out here through the grommet reaches around the vehicle. It's supposed to be retained by this clip here that keeps it on the firewall. And then it comes over, comes over the engine and then down right by, so right here, this is the, like an EGR valve. And so you've got hot exhaust gas feeding back from a, from a hot, you know, from a pipe that feeds the, you know, the hot exhaust back into this valve. And so this wiring passes right by that. So if this clip is broken, there's another clip like here that's likely broken and it could be in contact with the wiring. So if you've got an 80 series and you haven't remedied this, or even if you have, and it's been a while, definitely check that out and make sure yeah, you're not roasting your main engine wiring harness. That is not something you want to do. Uh, looking here at this fender on the passenger side, again, confirmation that that thing doesn't <laughs> doesn't have a VIN sticker. It should. Uh, let's see. Do we see any of the bolts here? Don't get enough detail to tell whether or not those have been turned. Uh, looking here at the fender, some of this might be lighting. Obviously, we've got some kind of sun flare going on, but there could be some clear coat failure here on the top of this fender that we didn't see in the other photos. Uh, regarding the hood, we do have a VIN sticker on the edge, so that's good to see. But yeah, mysteriously, the fender and stickers are missing. What's also kind of interesting is looking at the fender here and this wheel well arch, like this gasket seems pretty well sun exposed. So I'm really curious why this VIN stickers are missing because if it weren't for like the hood alignment, I don't know if I would call shenanigans here on the front end, but it, there's, there's no VIN stickers up here. And yeah, if you were to dig deeper or yeah, you'd be able to find, again, if it's been replaced in R dot sticker indicating that it's been replaced. So, hmm. All right, moving to the undercarriage. Looks good, looks clean, looks dry, in fact. Uh, everything here in the front, those burr fields still look good. Yeah, very nice front undercarriage. Uh, let's see. I think the spare tire matches, so that's good to see. Uh, a little bit of scratch there on the lower bumper. Uh, maybe a bolt missing, at least when you compare it to the on the driver's side compared to the passenger side. But yeah, otherwise, this looks pretty good. Again, kind of like sea breezy type corrosion. But like the exhaust looks good. Oh, actually, they've got like a piece of rebar welded on there for uh, catalytic converter protection. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very cool. I haven't seen that on a bat listing yet. So that's that's kind of cool to see. But yeah, frame looks pretty good. Not perfect, but yeah, it does look, does look okay. Uh, looking here at the transfer case in the back of the transmission. Yeah, that all seems dry. Can't really get a, a look at the rear main seal. And... Yeah, none of, the, none of the photos really give us that, unfortunately, to tell whether or not there's some seeping going on there. All right, here we go. Well, one VIN sticker, that is all we get, unfortunately. Looks like there's some staining, just a couple little, you know, maybe bleach drops or something on the back tailgate. But there's some receipts for work that's been done in the last couple of years, extra wheel nuts. 
By the way, if anybody needs the acorn style, these don't appear to be the acorn style. They're the, the flange style. But if anybody needs acorn style wheel nuts or even wheel nuts for like 100 series, yeah, reach out to me at the Lion Cruiser Project at gmail.com. I've got a bunch that I need to get rid of and would happy to be happy to send some out. But yeah, there we go. Back out front. And yeah, I don't think the majority of people are going to pick up on the front end possibility of an accident. Uh, yeah, nothing again comes up on Carfax. This is just my reading of the photos and what I see. Um, again, there, there is a, it's an, a fact, right? There's no VIN stickers on those front fenders. So you got to ask yourself why, um, the hood does have a VIN sticker. So maybe the damage was just the fenders, but kind of curious if there's damage to the fenders that wouldn't affect the hood. Uh, maybe it was repairable. I'm not sure. But yeah, regarding price, we've had, although it hasn't really been effective on some recent listings, but, but we have a rule of thumb for vehicles like this. So this is an unlocked 80 series, um, low mileage and rust-free, otherwise clean. Um, roughly that, that price has been at about $20,000. Um, recently, there have been some, I don't know, head scratchers that have gone above that. I don't know if it's bidding wars or what, but they've kind of made that and thrown that out. But um yeah, I think on this one, I would go obviously higher on price because of the mileage. Um, if it were me, I would detract because of the front end accident question or the front end, you know, body work question. But, um, but yeah, I don't think most people will catch it. So as a result, I, I won't take that out of my, my price consideration. So there's a good chance this one hits almost 30. Uh, I'm going to say 26,500 or maybe well, let's say 27. That, that's still an awful lot to pay for stuff, something like this. I've seen um, just people sending me vehicles. I've seen some pretty good even deals on... Actually, and that would be pricing for a Land Cruiser. This being a Lexus, I'm, I'm going to dial it back just a little bit. So let's let's say 27, 27,000, excuse me, <laughs> said, said the exact same number, uh, 26,000 for, for this one. But that's that's a hefty price to pay for yeah, an almost 30-year-old vehicle. But... Yeah, it's kind of the, the going rate for some of these. And I think the low mileage is really going to, you know, entice somebody. All right. So there you go. That's this one. Uh, pretty good looking truck overall. And yeah, appreciate you checking out the channel and the video. And I hope you have a good day. See ya.